Paolo, can you hear me? Okay, okay. Now I can hear you. All right, good. Well, hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> but that that is part of the challenges of being in a sustainable presence. Yeah. So I'm actually joining you uh, from the Monviso Institute, uh, where a very uh, good friend and uh, colleague of mine, Tobias Lutte, who's a professor at the ETH in uh, Switzerland, uh, has created a sustainable uh, laboratory, which is where I'm uh, calling you from. And I'm here with uh, a uh, corporate client and excited to look at how might we in a corporate organization design more sustainable futures. And this is the focus of the program that we're very excited to have the opportunity to work with uh, Poly Design and myself from the Institute for the Future to be able to offer a, an experience which will help those individuals who are interested in sustainability, those who are in organizations with responsibility uh, for implementing sustainability, specifically uh, ESG uh, metrics or reporting and tracking, and also anyone who is concerned, concerned about what's happening in the world today and wants to contribute to designing sustainable futures and, and help organizations make the transition to more sustainable practices. Sure. So those are some of the, the high-level points uh, that uh, we're going to be talking about. Okay, so first of all, I just uh, want to tell that this is an international course. I think there will be today there are connected with us an audience from all over the world. Uh, this is something that it's really important to quality design and to this for the future to exchange also the information, knowledge and competences from designers who want to make a social impact through design coming from different countries. So first of all, I want to mention that this is an international course. The, the, the course will start on the next uh, October, will be an intensive course, 88 hours, and will be delivered by a mix of faculty from Institute for the Future. We have a representation today with Joseph Press and Politecnico di Milano. So um, welcome to the audience. And uh, Joseph, if you want to introduce the topic we are going to develop during this training program, it's about the sustainability, it's about processes in the field of innovation. Exactly, well, thank you for that, uh, Paola. So I think uh, one of the questions that came up when the Institute for the Future uh, began exploring with poly design the potential to bring together futures and design, both organizations uh, realize that it's very important to be able to imagine futures. It's important to be able to know how to create scenarios of more sustainable experiences. And it's very important to have the ability to actually create those, to build those or what we refer to as design futures. And this is the combination to be able to help everyone who is concerned about the future, everyone that's interested in sustainability, to be able to develop the capacity to be able to create those more sustainable experiences that will contribute to a more sustainable world in a way that will help mobilize people towards transitioning to these more sustainable practices. And I think that's the key, coming together futures and design, what comes together is people. And how do you engage people for the transformation that is required? So we were really excited to bring together uh, really four faculty from Poly design for faculty, uh, including myself from the Institute for the Future, to create, as uh, Paolo you just introduced, an eight week uh, online course, uh, which will begin in October, and to create something that was not only a theoretical course, but also 
explored a concrete need and we will be using sustainable development goals. I'll share a little bit more about how we're gonna be using that in the educational experience. Uh, but first, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Polydesign. And I'm a uh, uh, visiting uh, professor at the Politecnico de Milano, which is where Polydesign is, uh, has been raised and been able to become a top ranked uh, consortium of educational opportunities uh, with many different training areas, uh, the many different uh, projects going on, and uh, you can see 33 specialized masters. And it's just a very rich environment for design in a, an applied way. And I encourage everyone to go out uh, to take a look at the, the wealth of materials and experiences that Polydesign offers to a global uh, audience. So, so it's been wonderful to be able to work uh, with Polydesign and specifically uh, the co-professor uh, in this uh, program, Manuela Celli, uh, who is one of the leading speculative futurists uh, and uh, designers of preferred futures. And the Institute for the Future, I am a, but I like to call myself a futures architect because I actually began my career as an architect. The Institute for the Future is actually the oldest uh, futures organization. And we have been doing futures since the uh, early uh, 1970s. And what this program is part of is Foresight Essentials. And Foresight Essentials is our training program, which has one very clear mission to build the capacity of individuals, of organizations and communities to be able to have clarity on the future. We don't predict the future, but we aim to increase clarity of the future so that we can help ourselves our organizations and the communities that we are part of to make choices today, how to bring that preferred future closer to reality. Joseph, now, yes. Joseph uh, yes, sorry, but did your introduction um, uh, need a question, uh, maybe that also from the audience, uh, uh, we were talking in the last uh, masterclass service design, just during design week here in Milan about uh, the difficulties for governments, for, for, all, for designers, for professors, for all the stakeholders involved in education to predict the future in a society so uh, changed from the point of view of complexity. So uh, there was an amazing uh, contribution from uh, Giorgio Quagiotto uh, from UNDP, uh, super, super interesting about the fact that we are looking for adaptation, how to adapt to the new scenarios, to the new complexity, because it's really difficult to uh, predict or imagine or design uh, futures in so uh, changing we are facing. So it's a very important question and I'm very happy to pass it over to the expert Manuela Cheri, who uh, has joined us and uh, I'll let uh, her respond. Hello, Manuela. First of all, uh, thanks for being with us. Manuela Celi, scientific coordinator with Joseph Press uh, uh, of the course, Designing Sustainable Future. Manuela, we were discussing, also waiting uh, for your contribution about new complexity in the field of designing future scenarios. Yes, can you hear me? Very well. Fantastic. Um, yes, I mean, uh, the... the, the the topic is uh, uh, very interesting indeed. Um, we have several layers of complexity to face indeed, because uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, there is a continuous need of updating values. Uh, of course, uh, the, the course will be focalized on sustainable futures, but we know that uh, sustainability is not the only topic we should focus on because sustainability is connected with many other layers. Uh, and uh, first of all, with uncertainty. 
uh, uncertainty, which is the most difficult uh, um, aspect that we have to manage with uh, when dealing with projects uh, that need a longer term uh, um, trajectory. Uh, so in reality, um, with uh, all the faculty that we have involved, uh, our tentative uh, is uh, to have a systemic approach to sustainability and to join both the competencies of uh, design, design thinking, design strategies uh, together with uh, the anticipatory perspective coming from futures and foresight. Um, we really think that uh, uh, this is a very good uh, wedding uh, because of the fact that uh, um, together with the capacity of anticipating, design will be able to materialize and to give shape to some of these solutions. So it's very important to join both the layers. Great, thanks. Uh, do you want to share maybe some uh, presentation about the next topic we are going to to face uh, in the course starting in October? I'm wondering if Josep can because unfortunately okay, yes, okay. here we are it because is. I've joined with the phone, sorry. Problem. We know it was an hard day today, so. <laughs> Uh, so I think building on what you uh, just said, uh, Manuela, what we really want to be clear about is the importance of developing those UNESCO key competencies for sustainability. And what's wonderful about these competencies is that we see that it brings together a few very important uh, skills, I would say, that connect futures, and that's the anticipatory and strategic, connects design, which is uh, system thinking and uh, systemic design and more integrated problem solving. And For sure. the point on uh, leadership, where we are encouraging all of our participants to strengthen critical thinking and to develop a strong sense of self-awareness because this is the essential, I would almost say, the, the critical difference in being able to design a sustainable future and engage communities to begin the transition towards more sustainable practices. Now, I mentioned at the beginning uh, that our target audience is really looking at three different kinds of, uh, of individuals, professionals that have the responsibility for uh, innovation, uh, transformation, uh, and sustainability uh, is clearly uh, one of those responsibilities, which implies innovation, it implies strategy, it implies transformation. Uh, it's also targeted for professionals and students that want to accelerate their own transition to a preferred future. And then lastly, any graduate students, uh, we emphasize graduate students, but uh, I do think that there are many undergraduate students uh, that are also aspiring for a career in strategy, innovation, uh, and transformation. And so these are the uh, target audiences that we are aiming the course for. Manuel, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about the uh, poly design faculty that we brought into of course. the course. Of course. Uh, um, well, um, I'll, be, I'll be part of the faculty. My background is uh, in uh, design studies and I have a PhD in uh, design and communication. Uh, but my interest uh, of study and interest of research in the last uh, 10 years have been focalizing on the relationship between design and futures. Um, and uh, I will introduce you in the design perspective on future, introducing also the speculative dimension. So the capacity also to go uh, beyond uh, the normal ways of doing research. Um, Professor Silvia Barbero, um, uh, which uh, in reality teaches at uh, uh, not only in poly design, but at the Politecnico di Torino, She's a Howard specialist in systemic design. So she will be able to give us 
um, a point of view, like a bird view uh, on the different possibility and the necessity of involving the different layers of uh, um, not only inside a company, I mean, but also involving uh, uh, all the stakeholders that might be involved in a far future looking project. Then we will have uh, Professor uh, Anna Meroni, uh, actually uh, our vice dean uh, in um, the design school. Um, she is professor of service design. She's a specialist uh, in product service systems. Uh, and uh, her help will be fundamental to spread this anticipatory view, uh, not only connected to the design or the project of a single project, but all along the uh, involved uh, uh, chain inside the uh, service system. Uh, and then we will have a professor, uh, Tommaso Buganza, who is a specialist uh, in uh, design strategy. And uh, we lead us uh, into um, the dimension of narrating uh, and storytelling, uh, um, which are very important elements uh, in the capacity of involving uh, different uh, levels of people uh, inside of the project. Thank you, Manuela. And on the, to the future side, in addition to myself, very excited that we'll have the team of the well-known Design Futures program, which is run on a quarterly basis through the Institute for the Future. It's led by Jake Dunnigan, uh, who is a professor at the University of Texas, uh, and is the lead of the Governance Futures Lab at the Institute for the Future. And Jake has spent many years uh, working in the space of design futures and embodied futures, a way to engage people to imagine that future, to feel part of that future, and to help them move towards that preferred uh, future. Jacques uh, Balsia is a, a futures uh, narrative hacker, uh, formerly a uh, journalist and an incredible writer of future stories. And so he is going to be uh, working uh, with participants to create scenarios, scenarios that may be more utopian or may be more dystopian. Ilana Lipset uh, is uh, another faculty member from the Design Futures Program. She has spent a number of years in participatory design on the ground. Uh, she was one of the founders of Free Space, uh, which is a community movement in San Francisco, where they actually take uh, buildings that have been uh, abandoned and turn them into community centers, community centers for cultural exchanges, for art exchange, for a job exchange. So a real concrete uh, experiences actually applying design futures to be able to cultivate and transform uh, communities. I'll be uh, with Manuela, your host throughout the entire program. And I'll have the uh, pleasure at the end, the last uh, course that we have to focus on the topic of leadership specifically future back uh, leadership, which is a method that uh, will be part of a new book that's going to be coming out in uh, January called Office Shock, Creating Better Futures for Working and Living. Bring some of that content in addition to uh, my co-author in the book and uh, mentor uh, Bob Johansson, who was the executive director at the Institute for the Future and author of over a dozen books. So really excited to bring the content uh, and experiences and expertise from Poly Design and mixed in with the Institute for the Future to create a very to create a very robust course. As I said at the beginning, we have decided to begin our pedagogy, our educational journey with the societal uh, sustainable development goals. We have chosen four uh, goals that are more industry focused. We've chosen four that are more community focused. 
We will be uh, listening to all the participants of what is your focus. And from that, we will then create some groups that will begin with Jake's uh, introduction to sustainable futures. Then Manuela will be providing a lead for speculative uh, design. Then uh, we will have uh, Jacques lead a course on world building uh, using his narrative hacking. Then as Manuela mentioned, uh, Silvia will be leading the class on systemic design. Then Ilana will be bringing in the topic of artifacts of the future. So actually creating things that provoke insights on that preferred future, that preferred future of a world with less hunger, with more education, with more balanced consumption. Uh, then we're very excited to have uh, Anna Maoni uh, share with us her many years of research and experiences in participatory design, looking at how do you cultivate a movement. Then Tommaso uh, will share recent research and a new book that is going to be coming out also in January called Story Making as a way to co-create narratives of preferred futures to engage people to make the changes that are necessary. And then, as I mentioned, I'll be sharing some insights about futures leadership. So those are the eight classes. Those are the eight faculty members. Manuela, would you like to add anything to the program overview? No, it's just uh, very important to say that uh, um, uh, these different eight contribution will be very connected to each other. They're not separate. We will organize the course in a way in which uh, the output of each day will nurture the next steps. So we will learn how to create a process involving all these different layers and modes of working toward futures. Uh, so it, it's very organic in the way in which it is uh, organized. Um, and also, um, we will try to be very coherent and, of course, uh, supportive in creating groups uh, and uh, in, the, um, in the work along the, the process. Yeah, I think it's so important that you, you emphasize that, Manuela. What we will do at the beginning, every participant will identify what is the future that you need to make more sustainable. That will be your design futures project, which will carry through as a red thread throughout all of the eight classes. And at the end, as part of the future's leadership, that will be the opportunity to share what will be your actions that you anticipate, or maybe you've already started, to be able to mobilize people to make that future that is a priority for you, wherever you may be in your career, whatever organization you're in, to help make that sustainable future a reality. And, and the intention here, I'm not gonna go into details on the focus. These are the uh, SDGs that are related to sustainable products and services. So we'll be asking all the participants to uh, choose one of these. Again, if there is an SDG that is not in this list, we can talk about that. and. What's important is to identify others in the cohort that have a common SDG or a common sustainable future. And similarly, we will be focusing on these SDGs, which are about equitable communities and empowered leaders. Again, we'll be working with all the participants individually and then do logical groupings so that there is an opportunity to learn uh, from each other and to help accelerate your individual projects. Each uh, class will be structured in a way that takes advantage of the online experience, but is also sensitive to the 
challenges that we've all been feeling uh, for the last uh, two and a half years on being online. So we will begin with a short lecture and then have the opportunity for Q&A. We'll then be moving into some group learning. And this is a great opportunity to be working uh, in much more smaller setting with the faculty. We'll have an opportunity for a break. Uh, and that break, uh, I will be running some uh, neuroplastic exercises to trigger your uh, synapses in a way that will help you grow and learn. Then we will be having some sharing between common SDGs. An SDG, for example, that's related to uh, consumption or production probably has to be related to an SDG of shared economies and more, e more equitable distribution of wealth. We'll be putting those together uh, in a, uh, as Manu has said, a very uh, uh, fluid uh, and organic way. Again, we'll have the group come back together, facilitate further reflected. And then, as uh, Manuela was emphasizing earlier, we will have 30 minutes for individual work, and it could be in pairs, to focus on applying the learning to your design futures project. Again, we're going to be asking all the participants to identify what is the future that you need to make more sustainable? That's going to be your challenge that then for those 30 minutes at the end of our each class, we'll have the opportunity to uh, work in much more smaller groups on your specific challenges and apply the learning uh, from the class. Uh, and then finally, there'll be a cohort uh, wrap up. Okay, uh, the timing of all of the uh, classes, and you can go on to the website to see the exact dates. Uh, will be Friday afternoon uh, European time and the morning uh, Eastern uh, Eastern time in the U.S. Dates have been confirmed and they are on the on the website. Manuela, anything you'd like to add about the uh, pedagogy and learning experience? Uh, I think it's very important that we highlight that uh, this is not a theoretical course, uh, so we will have always. Uh, a starting uh, uh, um, a, a theoretical contribution at the beginning to explain uh, what we're going to work on, uh, where it comes, what are the connections, uh, so far and so forth, introducing you to the topic. But then uh, the important part is how we put this into practice. So there is a very strong connection between uh, theory and practice. And uh, especially in terms of uh, um, group building, group working, uh, and also community enhancements, uh, because the important when, when trying to um, to bring the transformation ahead, the, the very important thing is uh, to uh, build a dialogue with the different communities, uh, being there. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, um, not only academic communities, but of course, company communities uh, uh, and also uh, citizens communities, uh, depending on the layers where you're working and then trying to uh, do some backcasting from that desired future and to find the elements that we can develop right now. That's the point. OK, thanks, Manuela Cheri. I can see some questions from the participants I would like to, to read to you. Uh, the first one is, can you give an example of a personal future project, please? It's maybe a potential student already to include <laughs> the assignment you were going to launch. So an example is uh, something that I'm going to be working on uh, starting uh, in another half hour and tomorrow is more sustainable production in the fashion industry. And so that is a business challenge that the organization that I'm currently uh, with here in uh, at Monviso is facing. We know the damage that uh, fashion industry, or sorry, the uh, impact that the fashion industry is playing on the climate change. And so trying to find ways to have more sustainable production. I will also add in those challenges how to encourage more sustainable consumption. And that I think 
is an example if uh, one of the uh, uh, members of the organization were to join the Designing Sustainable Futures course, they would bring that challenge in. They need to create a fashion, a future of fashion that is more sustainable. And the challenge is less about the metrics. It's less about, it's less about a circular economy. Those are important. The real challenge is how might you change the business model? How yes. might you engage leadership to sure. be able to change some of those things? So that is an example of the kind of a business project that we would anticipate you know, every participant should have, regardless okay. of what uh, company they come from. So maybe it's important to clarify that when we say personal, we didn't mean personal as a personal sure. project, but a personal uh, considering the different position of the participant to the course, they can propose a topic and maybe uh, they can gather also with other that are interested in the same kind of topic or topic that have the same aim, even belonging to different companies, for example. Sure. Okay, the second question is about the course. It will be online? Sure, it will be online because an international course involving faculty from two different schools, uh, Italian and American, so it will be an online course for sure, but there will be some activities, not just uh, lectures. So it will be an interactive course involving uh, also the feedback students, workshop activities and uh, activity that could be really interacting, not just lecture and seminar. How many participants? Please, please, Joseph. Paolo, just, just a thought. It, we may want to explore hybrid options depending on sure. the, uh, where the participants are from. If they're in a location, perhaps we could explore that. Sure, sure. Good point. Uh, how many participants will be there ideally? Well, we're looking for 25 participants coming ideally. from. Ideally. We will start also with less participant. Uh, I think that the international target, it's really interesting. So we're looking for this. Please, Joseph. Yeah, yeah I'd like to emphasize that it's limited to 25 participants. Yeah, maximum. Okay, we, we, yeah, we really do want to keep the learning experience uh, meaningful, intimate to your point. Uh, this is also about uh, contributing to uh, creating a community. A community of change makers, of future makers, and so it'll be limited this uh, this first uh, cohort to twenty five students. Exactly. Then the starting time October seven. The application for the deadline for the application is August thirty one. Uh, there will be an early bird until June thirty. Uh, you can find all the information in the link I shared in the chat. It will be an intensive course, 32 hours for eight weeks. Eight weeks. I think it's uh, all the information we could share today. Uh, let me check if there are other questions. Okay, appreciate to the faculty. Thanks to Manuela Celi and Joseph Press. I hope we could start the next fall with this uh, challenging course. We do believe a lot in this topic and so, See you in the next webinar. There will be other events organized by Institute for the Future and Policy Design for the audience and for the question of the target. Yeah. Thanks, and Joseph Press. Is, Thanks, Manuela Celi. It's a, it's a, this is a small group here, so I would encourage if anyone has any specific questions to reach out to Manuela or I. Sure. Yes, for sure. You, you, you will find our contacts in the website, of course. I thank you for your time, availability, and I thank the audience connected today with us. See you soon. Thank See you. you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.